Hey everybody, how's it going today? It is me, Captain Energy, and today I wanted to do something different. I was looking at uh, synthesizers. I've had a little bit of a gear acquisition syndrome lately, we'll say, and I wanted to purchase an MPC, an Akai MPC, uh, but I did not. I'm holding off because I heard there's a keyboard coming, which I would much rather have a keyboard version of a sampler than a beat pad type uh, version of the sampler, or, or to have the beat pads and the keyboard would be perfect. I just don't know that I would use the beat pad version that much. So, though I want it, I don't feel like uh, the current generation of samplers that are out there really suit the needs I have. Aside from that, whatever, you know. So I was looking at synthesizers, and I was thinking, what could I do? I want to do something different this week. So I discovered this, Ragnarok, which you see on my screen. And Ragnarok is a synth made by full bucket music I've, if you haven't heard of them i recommend you look them up i'll put a link down below full bucket has made a bunch of different synthesizers and they're all essentially free um they ask for a donation i recommend you do donate uh because donating makes more products appear you know what i mean and and keeps people interested in working on the projects that they've got going on if they're not making any money at all obviously this whole thing will die but Ragnarok was a one-off hardware synthesizer built in the 80s uh, by Hans Peter, okay? And he's known as Crimson Warlock in the KVR forums. Apparently, he had the synth, and he was trying to find somebody to build a VST, and he was hoping to get Bjorn Alt. I think I'm saying that right. He actually took the project on, and then they're building this synthesizer, Ragnarok. It is a uh, pretty simple, easy to use synth. Um, you're probably not gonna use it on everything you do, but it was wicked fun to mess with. So I'm just gonna take you through how you would use it. And uh, if you're interested, you can download a copy for yourself uh, for free, like I said. Um, and if you like what I got going on here when I played my little track I worked on with this, I was just messing around with it. Um, I'll be happy to give you guys my patches because all the patches that I used are either modified versions of the patches that it comes with or they are custom completely because I was sitting there tweaking around with it trying to see what, what it was capable of. Basically, okay, so this synth is has 64 slots for, for sounds, okay? 46 of them are, uh, are populated, okay, down to Oberheim. It's got a nice You know, nice. It's I've got a nice sound to it, you know. I thought it was pretty cool. Let's see harmonic bass 2. Go for another one here. Uh, acoustic guitar. These didn't really impress me, the acoustic guitars. It sounds like an acoustic guitar on a Nintendo, you know, Nintendo original. Um, Escape New York. Let's see. Pluck. This one's pretty nice. It's got some good sounds. Now, yeah, the sounds it comes with are fine, uh, but you're gonna wanna mess with that and, and make your own, obviously. I mean, look at the controls here. There's not a lot to them. You're gonna wanna try and come up with, you know, your own sounds, I would imagine, or take a sound that's there and mess with it. Now, when you do touch a sound, so we'll just mess with this, this in, in, uh, initialized patch, okay? That's my initialized patch. If I go over here and I change a few things, just random, Okay, I just made my own patch, right? Well, if I take that patch and if I just go to another, say I go to the next, you know, patch, which is also initialized, or if I go previous patch to the one, that Oberheim sounding one, if I go back to it, this patch, without even saving it yet, has saved my the settings I changed, which I was like, that is pretty cool because I can't tell you. I cannot even tell you how many times on a synth and by the way this feature that i'm talking about here i've played with a few of the full bucket synthesizers now and they all seem to do this and i love this feature you know i mean 
I get the idea of being able to like, oh, well, I didn't mean to do that. I want to go back to the original sound and go forward and go back to it and have it reload the sound. That's cool too. But I feel like it wouldn't be that hard to have like an undo that was per channel type thing or per, per patch. So I could make a bunch of patch changes. And then I, if I wanted to, I could go back and undo them on that one patch and then go forward and save all the other patches without losing anything. It'd be just a really cool feature. So if any developers are listening, just a thought, it's really a great idea. And uh, as a developer myself, I said, I was thinking, man, you know, that'd be a, I'd love to implement that myself in a, a, you know, a VST if I were making one. So yeah, cool stuff. So that's my sound that I made. I mean, not that I have actually even wanted it, but uh, it is st stored. I'm just undoing what I did real quick. because I know I just added some buttons over here. Uh, let's take a look at the, the interface here. So we'll start at the, the right over here. First, this is where you would load your patches, okay? You get your file, you can copy a program, load a program, uh, load or save configurations, you can load a whole bank, whatever. You get the idea of what this does. Um, if you want to jump around the banks, you can just click right here, or the number right here, and it will bring up this like section, it breaks down into four banks, each with 16 sounds. And you can just jump right to a sound you want. Okay. So if I want to go to pole drops, there I am, pole drops. Um, let's just go back where we were, which is right around here. 48. All right. You can export individual patches or all the patches. I'm going to actually just take my face off here. You just want to look at the interface, so we'll just do that. If you go to the left here, you'll see uh, this tune, and uh, this is intonation, and this is spread. Spread affects your sounds when you're using multi-voice. So if I go over here, hear that sound right now is just plain. If I add multi-voice, see how it kind of sounds like it's phasing a little? Now if I take this and tune it up, I can get that to have some spread to it. And then this right here, the little three, the meatball button here, lets you either add features to your, or functions to your mod wheel, which I can go, uh, or I can change my divide for arpeggiator type sounds. I can change my pitch for the pitch bend. I can say, let me bend that up a whole octave. But I could go to my mod wheel also and go, I want the mod wheel to, it's controlling the filter right now, and I want it to be able to control 50%. All right, now we'll go right here again, and here's where you tell it what your mod wheel is actually doing. I can tell it to control the LFO to the filter or the LFO to the oscillator. I can put it to the oscillator. And I'll put it to the filter. I may not have the filters set up yet to actually work because this is a default sound. All right, no worries. We'll come back to that. This is Portamento. Portamento lets you add that slidey sound to your synthesizer. You've got Legato. Here's your source. You can change your mix right here on your uh, from noise to oscillator. Got some white noise. I give us a little bit of a. Here's your LFO, which affects pitch. Here's speed, which affects the speed of the LFO. Here's ramp, which tells you how quick it gets to full speed on your LFO. Very ghosty sounding right now. Um, here's your filter attack, decay, sustain, and release. Now we also have uh, something I don't see very often on software synthesizers, and that is the ability to change from attack, decay, and sustain, release to attack, decay, which is not worrying about, like if I click this, Sustain and release don't really do anything now, but uh, let's go over here to the volume. You'll hear it better here. 
Okay, here it is with the tactic case to stand release on. You have a, the tail is affected by release. Decay tells how long the sound is going to go for here. Alright, attack is your startup of the sound. Actually, let me hit initialize because this is kind of. Alright, there we go. See how attack makes it like a slower rise to attack? If I turn sustain down, I take decay down. You can get like a like a pong type sound. Now, you can change this by clicking the Attack and Decay, like I said. And now, Attack and Decay are the only things that control the envelope. Sustain and Release are just there. They're not doing anything. So now we'll go down, right down here, to the Dynamic Controlled Multi-Pole Filter. Here are your octaves and your decibels. 12. You have high pass and low pass. High pass again. Then you can adjust them further with cutoff and resonance. Use key tracking. There's an LFO right here, which controls the envelope. And you can leave that on inverse or normal. You've got overdrive, which is the only effect on here, really. It's barely an effect. It's a little bit of little distortion. We've got volume. Okay. And then over here on the left, which I didn't show yet, uh, we have retrig. Without that, your sound doesn't retrigger. Like if I, when I, when I'm playing in mono, if I press, we'll just do a quick one here with G and then G, that might be G2 or 3. We'll say G2 and G3. If I let go, G2 gets struck again automatically by just holding it down. Which is kind of cool, it's like... You know, it's like guitar tapping. That's what Retrig does. Over here we have uh, n the normal repeat and host, which this changes how your envelope repeats. If I put some repeat, my envelope will repeat. If I put on host, it will sync up to whatever my DAW is at for BPM. Here we have uh, cutoff, resonance, key tracking, LFO, modulation for the envelope. And then we go over to the right here, and here we have a seven band filter where you can make adjustments here to your sound. Like if I wanted to get rid of some of the high end, I could drop this down and boost some of the low. I love the initialize buttons. Now you can hear the changes. If I wanted to bring in some 1K, 400, and 150 hertz, take that 12K down, 12,000K down. That's one of the ways you can shape the sound is using these, uh, this filter here. Um, aside from that, we have voices. So right now I'm in mono mode. I can put this on uh, four or whatever so I can have some polyphony. Okay, up to 64 voices per sound at the same time, which is pretty nice. Um, and then we look to the right here, and what we've got is... Uh, square wave and pulse wave. These are your waves, basically. This is your interval interval on the waves, and this is multi voice. Now this is kind of cool. Multi voice. What it does. If I choose eight, okay, we hear square wave at eight feet, which means it's like an eight foot string. If I did sixteen foot string, you'd notice it's lower. It's like a whole octave lower. 
And that's what happens. You've got a 12, 16, 8, 4, and 2 foot. So 2 would be the highest, right? Right. See? Now you can add both. Or all. Or any combination of them. And then you can do the same with pulse wave. Okay, then we have interval, and what that does is it adjusts the intervals of the different sounds. See how much richer it sounds by turning some, a couple of those on, or just even one. So once you go over here further and we go to multi-voice, what this does is it lets you spread the sound out. And you can adjust that by going right up top here to settings and see where it says SPR. Just so you can hear it a little better. Depends on the sound too. Okay. Let's turn that on. Hear that? It puts alternate voices detuned and spreads them out across the spectrum. And that's basically it. This synth is pretty good. Um, and again, like I said, for the money, it's free. So download your copy today and mess with it. Uh, just to give you an idea of what it's capable of. I mean, it's not exactly all that it's capable of, but I was playing around and I was just in the mood to make some kind of like video game like music so i was uh just messing with it and here's what i came up with all these patches everything you're hearing right now is 100 percent ragnarok um there are no other synths in here not the drums nothing i'm just gonna kind of fold these up so you can see what i got going on instrument wise there are a couple effects because as i mentioned this baby doesn't have any built-in effects at all um but other than that, everything else is Ragnarok. You can see it all the way up to the list here. Um, it's the only instrument going in, so here it is. That's basically it. I was just having some fun making like a background for if you could envision this being like in a video game where you were running down and jumping or almost sunk the hedgehogish or something. I don't know, just having some fun. Anyway, I hope you'll check out Ragnarok and let me know what you think of it. Also, check out the other synths from Full Bucket and uh, give them a whirl. I mean, like I said, they're free and you can donate some money to this guy and just to help him out and make him more sense and whatnot. I mean, it's it's a pretty cool project he's got going on. And there's a whole bunch of synthesizers there to choose from. Um, definitely worth looking at. All right. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope it was useful to you. If you did like the video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you want to tell your friends about it, send them a link. I'd be happy to uh, have more people come along. And uh, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. I'll be glad to get back to you as soon as possible. Have an awesome day. Thanks for coming by and enjoy your day. Go make some music. Take care.